I'm going to record too. And okay, we're ready. Yep. Welcome, everybody. Um, as a backup, I'm going to start recording on my up to the cloud. All right, so this meeting is being recorded. Um, welcome to the Beverly School Committee's Finance and Facilities Subcommittee meeting. Today is Wednesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I love that everybody came in proper attire. <laughs> <laughs> We're meeting in a hybrid model today using a remote meeting application provided at no cost to our district. BevCam is broadcasting, thank you, allowing for public access. Um, this is allowed under the governor's March 12th, 2020 order entitled Order Suspending Certain Provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL 30A, Section 20. This order specifically suspends the need for a quorum and the chair to be physically present although we all are, most of us are, and asks our body to use technical methods to allow safe public access. We would encourage viewers to utilize the BevCam streaming options this evening if possible. We're also trying a captioning tool while a longer term better solution is created citywide. Joining us today are members of the school committee, members of the public, who serve on the FNF subcommittee, members of our district administration and leadership teams, as well as city council representation. I will conduct a full roll call and take attendance in a minute for the record. Please remember that any audio or video that you supply on this platform will become part of this meeting record. As such, please remember to use your mute functionality to prevent background noises. Uh, as the chair, I will call on you and to unmute and then be recognized. Okay, so now here we go for the roll call. Um, in the room from the school committee, um, will you please unmute and make sure uh, you can hear me and be heard. Uh, Ms. Kim Coelho? Yes. Ms. Karen Robinson? Yes. Mr. Manzo? Here. Uh, I do not see Mr. Silva. Um, I need to keep watching the waiting room to see if I need to let him in, but I don't see him yet. Um, Ms. Ducharme? Hello. Thank you. Um, uh, City Councilor Julie Flowers? Yes, hello. Thank you. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say right here and right now it's Ms. Flowers' birthday. Okay, happy birthday. We'll, we'll try not to sing later. That would be total torture. Um, in the room with us, we have the Director of Finance, Jean Sherburn. Here. Uh, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Trocek. Yes. Queen of Everything, Donna Bergeron. Here. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, also in the room with us is Liz Curran, who's uh, in, in training. Hopefully she won't run away uh, to be our stenographer as time goes on. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Liz, in the future, if you want to um, speak and be heard, you need to push the little button on your microphone. See how it's a red ring? When you push it and you can then be heard, it will be a green ring. Okay, so um, I think that takes care of our preliminary items and we'll jump into our agenda. Um, I'm going to attempt to share uh, both the my, my screen and share the agenda as well as the other items that we'll be going through today as Jean wishes. Okay, Jean, the queen of the beans. Are you good? Yes. We maybe make that a little bigger. Hold on a minute. Uh, let's go bigger. There we go. All right, so our first order of business is we actually have two sets of meeting minutes um, from previous meetings that have... Um, We've had, we've had a little problem um, certifying our meeting minutes, quote unquote, on time. So the first set is from two meetings ago, January 20th. Um, can I have a motion to accept those meeting minutes, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Coelho. Second. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Are there any comments or corrections on this, set of, on this particular set of meeting minutes? I'm watching for my online people. Yes, Ms. Ducharme. I think my name was spelled wrong on one of them. I'm just double checking. I should have been more organized with this. I think it was on the second one. It might've been this one. Okay. Oh, try to catch up, sorry. 
I have the 20th, right? January 20th or February 24th. Those are your two choices. Oh yeah, one says uh, EY and, and not, the other one says AY. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so it should be AY. And I think on the one from the 22nd, it's EY. I don't mind at all, but just for the sake of getting it corrected. E, all right, it's AY. A -Y. Oh, yep. okay, you got it? I do. Because I have it electronically on my machine if you want me to do it on oh, my if machine. You could, if you could do it electronically, that would all be All right, great. we'll do that at the you end of the meeting. Right okay. Um, I thought I saw one, Ms. Ducharme, with an S on the end of your last name. I did see that also, and I think on the one from the following, the 24th, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, the 24th in February, there was a lot of Mr. Ducharme, which, I mean, I don't mind, but if we're <laughs> going around to get correct. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a motion on the table for the January 20th, 2021, with the corrections of Ms. Ducharme's um, name. Yeah, her being spelled correctly. Yeah. Any other comments or corrections? All right, there's a motion on the table. Because we have one voting member, at least one voting member, um, remote, uh, our, all our roll call, all our votes need to be roll call votes this evening. Uh, we'll start remotely. Ms. Ducharme? Yes. Mr. Manzo? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Coelho? Yes. Myself? Yes. So that's five to zero. Uh, meeting minutes from February 24th. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Manzo. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Coelho. Um, uh, besides Ms. Ducharme's spelling of her name on this set of meeting minutes, do I have any corrections? Yes, Mr. Manzo. Uh, you just need to include what time the meeting started. Oh. I believe it was 6.30. I believe it was 6.30 as well, right? Thank you. It's yeah, we were call, stacked. Under call to order, it just says. <laughs> that is totally my fault. I was watching the BevCam tape to make sure I had the BevCam offsets correctly, correct? And I, I must have missed that one. 6.30. Yes, and then I'll make all those electronically and send them back to you, Jean. Okay. Okay. All right, so with the correction of Ms. Ducharme's name, spelling of her name, and the time that the meeting started, which was 6.30, we started early so that we could be finished and then have a committee of the whole. Are there any other corrections or omissions? All right, a roll call vote. We're going to try to go in the same order, and it's kind of, for me, it's uh, to my right and then back around. Ms. Ducharme? Yes. Mr. Manzo? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Coelho? Yes. Myself? Yes. That's five to zero. Okay, the next item on our agenda is almost always a buildings and grounds report from Mr. Mike Collins, or, well, it used to be from our B&G for the schools who rudely retired and left us, um, Mr. Howland. Um, this month, Mr. Collins said was uneventful and we don't have a report. Right, um, and he will combine if there was anything um, significant on next month. But okay. He said that it was uneventful. Okay, and I'll remind everybody if you have a question about um, anything uh, B&G reported, we can submit those questions to Jean, and she will relay them, and then um, Mr. Collins will come prepared to answer those questions, or mm -hmm. will give his answer to Jean to relay back to us. So, if you have any questions, um, and I'll be have uh, I have a question, right? Oh. I, I already I think I already sent to you, but okay. So now your update, Jean. I am going to find your file. This one, right? Administrative update? Yes. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes, here it comes. All right, let's see. Do you want that a little bigger, or is that good? That's fine. I'm just going to look at my hand copy paper. Okay, and I'll, I'll try to keep up and move the pages when you say. Yep. So um, <clears throat> one thing I just wanted to point out that I was going to try to um, have a different color scheme so that you'll know when you're tra looking at something from CISL or when you're looking at something from F&F, &F, and when you have the superintendent's reports from the committee of the whole meetings. So and when I looked at CISL, I'm like, oh, that's so much different. So I did change it and I picked green because green and money. Excellent. And it happens to be, happens to be that Day. we're on St. Patrick's Day and Julie, uh, and yeah. Julie Flowers' birthday. Yes, that's right. And I did, um, you know, add, um, I saw um, what um, Dr. Flaherty had done about putting the date in the, um, you know, what type of meeting. So I was um, copying that. So the next slide is talking about what we're going to be talking about this evening. Um, we're going to be talking about the FY21 State Coronavirus Prevention Fund Program funding, which it's not a grant, but it's 
grant like. Um, some grant allocation changes, and the superintendent has um, some information in regards to the director of human and information resources position. And then I'll review the FY21 financial reports. So in January of uh, 2021, the legislative um, authorized a one-time funding to school districts for additional assistance to support the coronavirus prevention efforts. Beverly will be receiving $218,875. This was um, the budget provided funding equal to $25 per um, the FY21 foundation enrollment plus $75 multiplied by the number of low income is how they got to our share. They did receive, we did receive half of the funding um, this month in March and we'll receive the other half automatically in April. We do not have to uh, handle this like a grant where we have to submit a budget, um, but the appropriate, um, the appropriation comes immediately to um, us here to make the decisions on the funding. So um, it has to be put into a separate fund, a separate org within Munis. The eligible uses of the funds include um, PPE, hygienic supplies, costs associated with social distance, on-site learning, remote learning, and hybrid approaches as determined by the district. We can use the funds for expenses um, required to ensure that low income and other vulnerable students receive assistance and supports that provides them with equal access and educational opportunities. If you can go to the next slide, the key component of this is that these expenditures need to be made by 6-30-2021. Um, that means that we have to have the purchase order and the goods everything done. We can make the final payments, um, you know, after like in July, but it's not like we can encumber it and receive the goods in October. Um, Dr. Shurachek and myself um, discussed um, possibilities of the funding with this and what the immediate needs that we have with the re-reopening, bringing more students back is tents for outdoor dining. That would be for the middle school and the high school. And if there's any need in the elementary schools that come forward, we would use this funding. Additional staff for reopening. The high school has put in a request for a paraprofessional and we still have it open as far as if anyone else is going to need them. The hall and lunch monitors. So. We used to call these always just lunch monitors, and since the pandemic, we've added hall, bathroom um, monitoring to that. And there'll be a greater need for that. And the lunch monitors, if there's some students that are eaten outside or inside, there's a greater need for that. We'll need some um, additional bus monitors. And um, we're putting in for building-based um, substitutes. Um, that for needs that we need based on bringing more students back in. Classroom furniture and modifications, that would be system-wide, all schools. We're gathering that data now on what the schools actually need. Uh, some of it may be um, plastic protective plexiglass, but it could be to make different um, rooms that are not traditional classrooms into classrooms, like the gyms and uh, curriculum resources to be able to do, um, you know, the educating of the students during this time. Um, so that is informational for you. If anybody has any specific questions they want to ask, Dr. Shurachek and I are here. Um, but it is additional funding that the state has given us. So this is state funding versus federal funding. So the other grants that we've talked about were the CARES funding and the um, ESSER funding are federally funded through the state. So a lot of times people don't know what that means, but the funds actually are in the federal government and go through the state. So most of our grants like Title I, those are not state funded, they're federally funded, but go through the state. 
Oh, here, I'll, I'll be like Rachel. I'm, I'm going to call on myself. <laughs> Um, there's some technicality. I guess we're supposed to do that. Um, so a question, uh, Jean, for you, because this is state money and it's directly appropriated to us not going to through the city, the city side, quote unquote side, mm -hmm. I try to use my words very carefully there because yes. it's all one big pot of money, okay. um, pot of gold today on St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Um, do, so we don't have anything on our agenda to vote to accept this money. You will let when I get to the um, last last item. I did put it under grants. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and at this uh, point, I was just trying to give you information on what the grant, what the funding is for. Okay, and then um, a question for perhaps Dr. Trocek, in a classroom that previously, in like in the high school, in the one third model, mm -hmm. um, if high, if a classroom had like tables versus individual desks but they just weren't being used because only one third of the students were there would this be an example of where we'd have to buy some furniture because we wouldn't want two children sitting at a table we'd want to take the table out and probably replace it with desks i can't speak to specific how the furniture will be reorganized the spacing will be still spaced whether or not the table is one table and the students are still spaced the distancing is still going to be the distancing um, I actually think the furniture is, the, the conversation around furniture is uh, lunch. In the, we have all desks in the lunchroom. And so if we return the desks to the classroom, what do we need to do? So it's, it's a matter of, the, there's a ripple effect as to what we have and where we have furniture. We do have half of the field house filled with furniture right now that needs to be repurposed. And so it's a matter of thinking about what needs to go where. So yes, that's a good example that whatever the furniture in the room needs to be appropriate for the student, the number of students that are gonna be in there and how the configuration has to be set up. Okay, great. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking around the room to see if there are, yes, Ms. Robinson. Um, just thinking about furniture, um, if we do need to purchase anything, is there any f just thought to the future of where we could use it? Or is there, would it be financially smart to rent furniture? I'm just. That's a good, no, that's a good question. Uh, so we, anything that we are considering purchasing, we're making sure we're purchasing that would have a purpose for a, a future use. Um, in terms, we, we, we actually haven't really come up with a, a lot. At first, we thought we were going to need to purchase a lot of desks, but as the guidance came out and as some of the schools and some of the furniture was really at the elementaries because, again, we had all the desks in the cafeteria or we didn't, we had, you know, smaller numbers or we were, you know, whatever for classrooms. Um, but, but I think that the guidance shows how we can use tables. So if we if we can in, in some kindergarten rooms, for example, that have desks right now, they're making the decision to go back to tables, utilizing the guidance and how to have ch students sit, clipboards, different things like that, so that some desks are being um, freed up. In terms of leasing, the tents in particular, we're looking at lease versus purchase for a number of reasons, um, storage, put up, set down, you know, when you lease it, it comes with the whole crew comes, put it in, fix it while it's here, take it away when you don't need it anymore. Um, it just makes more sense for us. So um, in terms of that, we're looking at everything that we're trying to procure, we're trying to decide, is it a lease option that's better for us? Is it a purchase option that's better? So, yeah, thank you. I am looking around the room before we switch slides. Oh, Lindsay, uh, Ms. Ducharme. Sure. Um, I don't want to jump ahead. So, um, Jean, if you want me to reserve this question, I'm certainly happy to do so. I think it's kind of a piggyback on the discussion we just had. I know that you've pinpointed some of this money for the expenditure that has to be made by June 30th for paraprofessionals. We've talked about tents. We've talked about it lease or purchase for a variety of different reasons. Again, maybe I'm jumping ahead, but I'm wondering this as a parent, not sitting in your seat and not sitting in Dr. Trocek's seat. Is this an, I mean, this doesn't, this seems like a drop in the bucket. Is this enough money? Like, do we, do we have enough for what we're going to need to make this work is my larger question. Yeah, that's a great question. This is just one source of funding that we have. There's a new, a, a, a number of sources of funding. Um, and also this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a list to kind of give a sample of an idea as time goes forward. The other thing that, um, and we know Jean is um, very, very good at doing this, we can bring expenditures that we may have made in January and apply them to this money 
freeing up money to do another thing, right? So we do a lot of that um, and looking at what has, what the acceptable use for some funds would be for something. And it is allowable to go back to, to I think, back all the way back to January in, for purchases made. So some things that we may have already paid, you know, we can do some transferring and, and utilize that money for that. So um, this is... Um, I think it was an unexpected, both Gene and I were a little surprised. It was an unexpected amount of money that came our way, but also is very helpful, particularly as we look at trying to return to full in-person around the, for us particularly, the, cap, the whole idea of what are we doing at lunches. And so you've noticed that we have a pretty heavy emphasis on what we're going to utilize the money for in terms of safety measures for lunch. So um, that was one area that we felt, all right, here's some. Here's the first place we can take a stab at what we might need to do um, going forward, so. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manzo. And so speaking of lunch, if you, if you put up these tents outside for students to eat, do you need furniture to go in those tents as yeah. well? Or well, so that's another that? good question. <laughs> well, um, we're having lots of discussions. I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures at the elementary level where they have some buckets. Yep. that they're using for outside. So I think at the middle school, there's some conversation about the maybe being able to utilize those because they're flexible. And when you want it, we want the space to be used not just for, for cafeteria space yep. at the middle school, but also for outdoor learning space. So there's that option. Um, we're looking at some of the um, relic furniture that's at the Briscoe Middle School right now in terms of chairs that might be able to be repurposed for outside at the high school for seating. Mm -hmm. But we also have had a conversation about kids aren't going to be opposed to sitting on a towel out, you know, depending on where they are, like what's the seating need to look like outside um, and how are we going to, you know, manage that. So a lot of conversations around the seating and what is going to be needed and, um, and how we're going to do it. So we want to use, we don't want to just purchase as uh, Ms. Robinson alluded to, we don't want to make these huge purchases for things that we're going to use from now until June 30th and then not have a purpose for later. So just in thinking about that, we're trying to be as creative as we can be. So, Mr. Robinson, um, I just wanted to share that um, over the summer, um, I went to Ipswich to um, to get lunch with my kids, and in the middle of the town, they had a tent mm -hmm. for people to go bring takeout stuff, and people had just donated, yep, tables and chairs, and it, it was it was really a cool thing to see, and it was I mean, yeah, like so you said, kids aren't opposed to. Right, alternate seating, we'll yeah. call it for now, <laughs> and we and, and we're 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 really working through that. And I think a lot will happen. I think a lot of ideas will come from kids. You know, I think we might ask students. So, what do you think you need? What would work for you out here in this space during this time? Because they can come up with some better ideas than maybe we can. So, I'm gonna call on myself, um, and just to reiterate, our children will still be getting a bagged lunch. Yes. It's not like they're going to have a tray Correct. and need to it's use all, a fork and, it, and knife. Exactly. It will be a bag lunch, which is a to-go, right. grab-and-go. Picnic style. And so we don't need oh, as yeah. formal. It's not like we need a table on yeah. which to put our food. Yeah. Okay, great. That is, that, and that was the conversation that we had about that. Ms. Ms. Coelho. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about, oh, it's kind of curious, how we got the number, um, 218-875, that regular children only get $25 and we get $75 per low income. How is it determined who is regular, who, how we get the low income? Is there numbers for that? And is that based on just the children that were hybrid? So um, typically, if you want, I don't know, uh, typically, the, uh, there is a formula, and I believe, and, I, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but they used a certain point in time, and they have a number of students who are identified via the, you know, our our stu student information system and our report state reporting that we do, and so it's an algorithm that they use that weighs. So you get a certain amount per student, and then for each additional student that's identified as low income, you get an additional seventy-five dollars, or they make a they change the algorithm some way. So it's all set, and I believe it would. I want to say that it was the number of students on October 1 of 2019. That's what I'm thinking. That, I, that's what's in my head because that would be the Chapter 70 number that they used. Um, and so, so they just they they don't they just look at what we have on our state report as far as those numbers. So they're not looking at like today. They're looking at what that number was then. So to would it be, for instance, the same number that we report who get free and reduced lunch? 
right? If we were if we were to overlap yeah. those reports, we would see approximately the same Approxim subgroup. Yes. And if you children. remember, there was a, a shift in how they counted um, low income students a, a few years ago, and it lot switched to sort of that direct certification process. Mm -hmm. And so it's a combination of those, and it and that's exactly where they get the number. Okay. Great. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Manzo. And it's and it's a, a statewide thing, so yep. it's not a Beverly thing. So if you go to PBD sale metrics, they're using the same formula, yep. breaking the students down in the same rationale. So we got the numbers for Essex Tech last week, and it was you know the same kind of formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I asked this before, and I either I forgot the question, or maybe it needs to be asked again. What about storage? Because if you're buying a lot of furniture and stuff that we need now, but maybe we don't need next year or things that we were using last year but not using this year and so i think in the past i asked about storage trailers and whatnot can this money be used for that yeah it, it can be used it, it has a very wide range of use and um, we did if i don't know if you um were on uh, the committee at the time but we did purchase five storage trailers are uh, for our storage trails for each building at the beginning of the year when we were starting to do this we've utilized our field house yep. and our gyms for at, at almost every building for storage during this time i think we're really thinking about revisiting and repurposing the furniture we already have rather than trying to purchase new furniture all the time um, I think some of the, um, so when I talk about some classroom furnitures, we have probably five or six spaces at the high school that we've expanded classrooms into because of class size, because we had, you know, made a commitment to find larger spaces for classes that had a higher level of enrollment. We needed to buy a TV and a TV cart. We needed to buy, so we utilize that to make those spaces amenable for instruction. So I know that one of the um, big purchases that we made were the the TVs and the TV carts for those spaces so that could work mm -hmm. um, and and that sort of thing. So um, and, and so we are repurposing. In terms of storage, that's why we decided on the tents. Like that was really the final straw. Where would we store these tents if we had to take them down? And we thought, yeah, let's just rent them. We think that's a better option. Um, so, so that actually leads to my other question. So now you've added storage containers at each school and now you want to put up tents. Has it restricted any of the outside space that people are playing fields here or at any of the other schools? No, we um, we actually had uh, the company a company come out and help us identify the spaces where those tents would go so that they wouldn't restrict that type of access. So at the high school, I believe the tent is going in the student parking lot closest to the tennis courts, if I'm or or some you know in that general area, um, because that that parking lot isn't quite as full, you know, and isn't quite as used. So that was the area at the middle school. They're going to be at the spaces in between the neighborhoods, okay. um, as well as a space, I think, out here in the outdoor learning. And I think there's one additional, she has four. She, uh, the middle school is looking for four smaller tents. The high school is looking for one huge tent. So um, because the way, they're, the way that they have to operate what they're doing and how they're going to do it. So um, good. So it, it shouldn't impede current traffic patterns. It shouldn't impede any of the current things that we have. The storage trailers were identified. Each principal identified a spot on their um, campus that they felt it was. And it kind of followed up where they had the window staging. Remember when we were doing some of that? So mm -hmm. they, they have spaces that they knew that they could utilize that for. Good. And one thing I wanted to add is when we did purchase the storage trailers at the very beginning, we do have some storage trailers that we are renting that we're hoping to be able to, once we get the furniture mm -hmm. out, get rid of the ones we're renting and utilize the ones we purchased. Thank okay, you. can we scroll? Are we all good? Lindsay, I'm looking online. Ms. Flowers, birthday girl, I'm looking online. You good? Okay, Jean, are we scrolling? Okay, yep. So the next um, the next slide that we have here is, um, I'm gonna be bringing these, um, that grant that we just talked about and these budget adjustments um, is the last document we're going to have. But uh, what I wanted to talk about is that each year the uh, DESE um, reallocates um, their grants. Um, so there has been some increases and decreases. So these grants you have already um, um, accepted uh, previously, but there has been some changes to the award amounts. So I'm not looking for a vote at this point, but I will later on. So the Title I grant was decreased by $566. The Title II grant, um, Grant 140, was increased by 959. The Special Education um, D, uh, DESE Grant 240 was increased by 5,820. 
and the uh, special ed early um, childhood ed allocation was increased ninety dollars. And um, Ms. Cases um, has heard from the Department of um, Public Health that our comprehensive school health services grant um, has been increased from five thousand to twenty thousand. So that was an increase of fifteen thousand dollars. So I'll be bringing all of those for a vote later on. But I just wanted to, um, you know, let the committee know that it periodically it does change. We get increases and decreases, um, and the special education one, you know, you that's where you. I'm expecting that we may have some more costs that we need to do. So a lot of that's going into the contracted services to meet the students' needs. Um, so the next thing I have on here is um, the um, superintendent is going to discuss the um, the director of personnel and human resources position that we have with, with uh, Mr. Harmon uh, vacated um, and left us on January 22nd. The current administration has been covering his duties internally um, and the administration would like to expand the scope of the current position and rename the position to Director of Human and Information Resources. And I sent in a separate file um, just today a copy of the job description, but I'll pass the baton over to the oh. superintendent to talk about this, new, <laughs> this change in position. Thank you. Um, so as Jean said, uh, Mr. Harmon left um, at the end of February, I think, at, or whatever you probably said it. June, um, and, and the position has been vacant. I want to move forward and post the position um, by the end of this week. But um, we have been doing a lot of uh, reflecting on our organizational chart and the work that's being done and roles and responsibilities. And um, as we looked through it, we, we sort of have, as a cabinet, brainstormed some ideas that we think we can increase the responsibilities for this position and actually uh, make some changes that allow us to hit some of our priority areas that we've identi identified as priority. Um, one of them being we, we each year have come forward and asked um, and had a priority around uh, assistant business manager or someone to assist in the business office around a lot of the business management um, operations, as well as we've had discussions about the need for oversight of data and data management. And so um, we, I, I've spent a lot of time talking with other districts and researching what the roles and responsibilities around some of these positions could look like. And what we've come up with is a, um, an idea that um, if, we had th if we took this position um, and, re um, and restructured it to have a different set of responsibilities, um, we would call it the Director of Human and Information Resources. So thinking on the human resources side, I think we've, had, um, it, we've, we've been reviewing the role that the Human Resources Director had in the past in Beverly and what, what responsibilities we think that um, it could, could enhance that position, particularly in the area of payroll and around some of the work that intersects with the business office around unemployment. Some of the things that, um, you know, that, so we are targeting this position to have a, a heavier sense of responsibility, not just around hiring and, um, you know, um, leaves and some of those things and expanding it to a role that would work much more closely within the business office. Um, and also uh, the same, in, when we think about human resources, we also think about information resources. And for us, there's a great um, uh, responsibility for state reporting, which intersects with human resources. So a lot of our staffing patterns, a lot of our data collection, our student information system, all of those things are all um, really important. And so we feel like um, at this time, when we go out and look for the person to take on this responsibility, we'd be looking for someone that has the experience and understanding of how schools run um, and what role these two things would play within a school district. So um, we worked really hard at looking at a lot of different job descriptions and identifying the roles and responsibilities for this position. So before I open it up to questions, um, just to be clear, this position already exists. And so technically, 
we then we don't have a vote on our we're agenda not, about it, right? Because, vote, but, I, be, but yep. there's, you're being, in essence, incredibly polite to bring it to us and talk about it, right? Because because technically, and that, that's what I wanted to just make very clear, the position already exists, and as such, our committee does not have to vote on adding it. Right. There's nothing to add. We've had right. some conversations, though, that job descriptions s sort of fall a little bit under the purview of um, of you know we want we want the committee to be familiar with what our job descriptions are, and with this one I would be suggesting that there's an increase in salary for what we currently pay for the job that we have t to this position because of the added responsibility, it would it would have a, an increase in salary as well. So so now you know, I'm looking right down to the end of the table because I'm sure Mr. Manzo is going to have some questions. I know exactly what his question is. This is like <laughs> ten do? years of working I together. I don't even know. I don't know that one. Well. Um, since you asked, um, <laughs> yep. I, it, this has been an interesting position in, in over the course of, of my tenure with the district. We, we've, we've had we've had one. We've not had one personnel director. Yep. Um, and um, one of my favorite positions that no longer exists in the district is the assistant business manager. Um, and so, and that was simply because I always felt like we had a duty as a district to train the next Gene Sherburn. <laughs> And so going this way, you're not going to be doing that. You're not going to be finding some young kid with, you know, a bachelor's in accounting or whatever, or an accounting degree, come in to sort of learn the business. You're looking, you're going to have to find some very established person who probably knows one of these two things really well mm -hmm. and wants to add the other thing, right? And so that's the one, the one um, drawback I see in this approach is that, um, not that Gene is ever going to leave, but if should if it should ever happen, it'd be nice to have that that Gene Jr. sitting in the background, you know, taking notes and figuring out what the job is all about. So that was my only real, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but but it's just this position is such a it's been all over the map. Right. To me, it's like, well, yeah, try try this, see if this will work because. It's the HR position has been so many things over the years. Why not try this as well? So I think one of the things that we really honed in on as we were, because we spent, a, I, I think we spent an, an, a very um, a great amount of time talking and thinking and trying to revisit how this would work. We really wanted to think of those areas that we believe are not getting the attention they deserve in terms of oversight. And so data management, and, and Maddie is phenomenal and we love her, but she's a, a woman all left on her own all the she's, time. Th that position is staying. That right. position is staying. It's not changing. Th what we hope is we're strengthening it yep. because we're going to provide some play. oversight and someone for whom can, you know, can really be a thought partner with her and, and help that position grow. But, you know, at this point in time, she really is kind of doing her thing and checking in and you know so that was one p point um, we also you know in terms of that so there's so many things about state reporting and and all of these things and Jean and I have spent a lot of time talking about cross training so that there's someone that knows everyone's job so that if someone were to leave we don't have this only one person understood the role and responsibility for that right. and at, at right at the current time our Business office operates pretty much as a bunch, a number of silos, and everybody has their one position, and there's not a lot of that. And so, this idea of taking human resources, looking at the intersection of the business office and the fiscal part of wages and and some of those things, um, is a starting point for that. As well as, together, this position and Gene can take a look at how do we begin that cross training and how do we make sure that there's some overlap and understanding. And so, um, we think that. We think this is a step in the right direction in terms of uh, broadening the ability to meet the needs that we have that we've identified. Um, and we do think, and I, I understand what you're saying, but I think a pipeline can come from a lot of different directions. Yep. And so um, I do understand I always have pipeline on my mind. <laughs> so um, I, I agree with you on that. The other thing I wanted to add to that is that, um, you know, I do the end of year report and Maddie does the EPIMS report, which is the employee report. And right now, the DESE is looking at those to come for comparison and aligning them up. And that's one thing that this position will be doing is looking at it and, you know, saying. So at one time, um, just for an example, um, Maddie thought that the psychologist was non-sped. And I say it's sped. So when I report the expense, I say it's a special ed expense. And she was reporting it as 
non-sped. So they're saying, well, you're spending money, no positions, and you're not spending money, and you have positions. So that's one thing that this person will be able to look at the two and be able to say, okay, and start looking at it more, in more depth and um, or allow me to look at it in more depth and to see what the two do. But I do agree with Dr. Shrochek that this is a good area where we can have that somebody else can help with knowing, you know, what do we do? Because we do have a lot of longevity here yeah. um, in our accounting and business department. So we do need to start looking at that in a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna call on myself and say, Mr. Manzo, you really, tr you didn't totally trick me, but I expected you to ask, um, where is the extra money gonna come uh -huh. from? <laughs> So what I'll say on that is that will happen during the FY22 budget mm -hmm. um, process. So we're not bringing that forward here to talk about it. We have an idea of what we're going to need, but we will be building that in our FY22 budget. And is that to imply we have no prayer of finding someone to fill this position for the end of the remainder of this year? I would be posting this as a July 1 start date. Okay. Uh, Dr. Trocek, did you want to touch base on the last two bullets that, that we talked about on? Sure, I have the, to look back, back at what to they the are. Public information oh, yeah, so, so, and, and communication. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I, I, I talked a lot about personnel management and data management. Um, this person also would fill the role of public information officer. Um, actually, that was already a part of what human resources did. So John Harmon was our public records person. And so this person would also have that responsibility. Um, and then finally, you know, we, communications is, is going to be a part of this role. We think about communications and um, in terms of our um, the website and, and the sort of things that we'd be moving. But that is, we, we, we believe it's going to take at least a year for this person to um, acclimate into the new role and for us to, to take a look at that. So we listed communications as a part of this. We think it's an important part. Um, and so it's, it's also, but you know, we kind of have it in scaffolded order as to where, where, where we want to go. I think it's important. I mean, I, I, I would just share, I'm always looking how we reallocate our resources and what we have and what we do. The, the funny thing about education is that it's changing like daily if you just watch and see what we're doing and so we we sometimes forget to take a look at our operations and at at some of the other resources human resources that we have and make sure that we're aligning them with the responsibilities and the changes that we're making so um, we think that you know we're always taking the opportunity to see if there's a you know if there's a vacancy what was that role doing how effective was that are there other responsibilities that we can add to that role and is there some shifting that we might need to do in order to uh, make it more effective mm -hmm. lindsay might have her hand up yes yes Ms. Duchamp. um i appreciate your patience with this question i apologize if it's something i should already know i'm question i'm wondering how did you find someone to fill this position like you just posted if it's to come to you is it more of a recruiting type position i'm thinking about it as an opportunity to further diversify um if it's not you know if fnf's not an appropriate place for that question i'm happy to take it offline yeah no no i mean i think oh, i think we're always thinking about that i think that this position uh, we would be looking for someone that has um school leadership um a background a background in school leadership a background that um understands the the um the way that schools are evolving um, and understand how pers how our human resources need to match that, right? I think that's that's a bigger challenge. I think often human uh, personnel in personnel, it's not just a job posting. It's a you know it's what is that job doing and what are we asking that and under having that understanding for that. So we're gonna post the position. We're gonna look for the most qualified person, just like we always do, um, and we look forward to the process. Okay, I have one one more question, my my own self. Um, I guess, especially as we plow towards the end of the year, are you are you, Mr. Vern, like okay with not even posting this? Like it's just that much longer before we try to get you the help that we have said for years that we think you 
want, need, and deserve. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like that Mr. Harmon's already been gone a while and we're not spending the money that we would have spent to pay him because he's gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering whether we entertain trying to find somebody or maybe as the end of the year all your requirements are stacking up for the end of the year like those reports that you have to do might we want to hire a part-time person to help get us through the end of the year well so so Dr. Shrotek has already addressed um, it, so it's not all on my plate right now. Okay. So there are, um, you know, we spread John's um, positions across many. So, of course, you know, I'm going to be handling workers' comp and unemployment because that's, you know, my, my Bible and, I, you know, I need to watch the money there. But it has. We've had um, some help from other administrators on um, leaves. Um, I do have, um, we have a, do, have a new hire in our uh, personnel HR office as administrative assistant that is phenomenal. So she's actually been able to pick up stuff that I used to have to do. So as far as that, yeah, it's going to be tough, but we can do it. Um, you know, Dr. Trotek's picking up work, DOT is, Andre has, I mean, everybody is, you know, pitching in. Um, okay. You know, as far as the... Um, um, savings there is when somebody does leave there isn't a cost with that that they get you know purchased out their time so um, so it's not like I'm saving you know hmm. a, a whole half year's salary right. um, but we can be able to do that so I think I hit it right and I think it, you know I mean if, if ever we're in a position where we need to temp some temporary help to come in or some interim help to come in we certainly would do that and Jean would just ask and we would work that out okay Okay, am I scrolling? Are we ready? Are you all set? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Ms. Robinson. Uh, one question. Um, so I understand that you want someone who understands education. Mm -hmm. um, so is that a little bit different for, because um, if you look at the role of director of human resources and a database management person, do, do you usually look for, like, in, if you were hiring those two positions, would you look for somebody with experience in education? I was just curious if... Um, if, is it preferred that they have experience with in schools or? I fire? think that one of the things that, so, so I, I think Jean um, just made a really good point. So the tasks, some of the individual administrative tasks, we have a human, we have a, 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 a administrator of uh, HR, right? So there's someone in the office that's doing a lot of the tasks. I think what we um, are looking for is some, um, uh, someone with a connection to education, because I think it's it's very difficult. It's a very different world than a business um, when you're hiring, and, the, and there's licensing that needs to be considered. So the work and personnel within the um, schools, you have to make sure that you know there's a you keep your eye on licensing, and that when you're when you're hiring, you're making sure that people are licensed for the job that they're doing. And there's some there's some nuances that are different than in the in the education world. I think that. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I think understanding the data, Maddie knows how to enter the data and knows how to report, do the reports. Having her have someone who understands why we need the data and what we need to use it for is important. So, I mean, I'm, those are just sort of the things that I'll be looking for in the hire. You know, I've never hired anyone for this position before, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a first. I, I do want to add that a lot of districts are looking at what their human resources department yeah. and what more can you we do with it and what data can you get yeah. i mean that that is the whole thing i mean dr Shrotek and i talk about you know like another community may say that they spend money a little bit different than us and that's what we need to be able to see is right. what does that you know both for the right ways yeah but it could be you know why why does that you know district have more student per student cost in in, in, in the, the state reporting the way that we're doing it i think it 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 paints a picture, but we want to make sure it's painting the right picture. Right. Right. So, so for example, I, I continue to look at what they say our per pupil spending is, and I, it just doesn't fit with what I see us spending per pupil. Right. So what I see us spending in the district per pupil looks very different than the number that shows up on the DESE website. And th there's a piece of that that has to be in the category categorizations that we have for our staffing or some of the ways that we're reporting information and Jean and I have spent a lot of time taking a look through that and trying to discern it and that's when we 
came up with the idea that there are some codes that Maddie's using for some staffing pattern and Jean ha may have different codes. And so having to figure that all out. And so I think those are the little nuances that I think will have an improvement within the district on. I think, um, you know, so I think those are all the right. small pieces that led to an idea of how can we make sure, because I do believe that the way that the EPIMS is the personnel information management system, right? And so when you're doing that state reporting around EPIMS, that's, you want to make sure that the, that the information is connected to what, um, what's actually happening. Okay, I'm looking, Lindsay, you good? We're gonna scroll, we're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those doggies scribbling. So the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is our financial reports. We do have a budget transfer, a review of the revenues, expenses, uh, acceptance of the grants, and the gifts to schools. So we're done with the slides. Budget transfer first. Sure. So the budget transfer that I have um, before the committee today is um, uh, transfer number 386. And um, this transfer is, um, you know, based on um, the uh, last month I brought forward the, um, the transfer that we did for all of the salary accounts. And uh, there was a remaining amount in the reserve for negotiations. And uh, this is... Um, highlighting um, where, the, where we move those monies into um, specific um, salary accounts. All right, I'm looking for a motion to accept this transfer. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Manzo. Second. Thank you, Ms. Coelho. Are there any questions on this particular budget transfer number 386, a total of amount of $34,900? Yes, Mr. Manzo. So these are all going to salaries. These are all salary accounts, yes. Thanks. We're on a one page, right? Mm -hmm. Just this yes, one yeah. page. There's nothing further. So we can see where each uh, where each of the accounts, um, where the 349 is going into each of these other and accounts. And this was for individual um, individual contracted. Okay, seeing no more questions, there's a motion on the table. With a second, we're going to go around. Uh, Ms. Ducharme. Honey Bunny, I saw your lips move, but I didn't hear you. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manzo. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Robinson. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Coelho. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Myself, yes. So that passes five to zero. Uh, what is next? Expenses? Um, revenues, what do you want so, next? revenues would be. Revenues, okay, hold please. Uh, revenue report. I have to get my, my annotations cleared off, sorry. All right. Here's your revenue report. Um, so the revenue report um, before you is um, this is a um, you know breakdown of what um, has happened um, this month. Uh, there really hasn't been too too much difference. Um, one thing that I'm looking that may change is uh, the transportation revolving. If we're able to um, add any um, additional riders, which we're not sure at this time, um, that we may have that. Um, we do still have to need to collect um, six thousand two hundred fifty six based on um, what our projection was. Uh, the building rental fees, um, we still need to collect uh, 49,000. I'm not sure if we'll, um, you know, if that's gonna adjust much um, now. So that's one thing I, I'm looking at Dr. Shirochek um, and thinking, oh, I didn't ask this question, but will the Y be running more programs after schools if the kids are coming back? More so days, they, or is it about the same? Although what happened is they would shorten their time, so they run from two to from twelve to six. Now they'll be running from two to six. So we probably won't see any more any difference differential in that because per, it's based on first, enrollment. Yeah. So, um, so that's one area that I need to watch um, to make sure. Um, but I do know that my revolving account did have enough money to um, support that if need be. Um, we are using two hundred thousand dollars of the revolving for that purpose. 
Um, preschool revolving, um, they just had a, a, a lot of students come in and be tested um, just the other day, so that may come in, um, but we're already up over and above what we were anticipating in that. That's a, a growing group. Um, the user fees for the um, um, athletics for the um, high school and middle school, I believe that we're just starting to post in the um, fees for the fall two categories. So that's something that I mentioned um, last month um, when Mr. Keefe was here, that I need to sit with him and see what is the overall, what we're taking in and what our expenses are. So that's an area that I may um, need to um, cover because, of course, any of these revolving accounts cannot be in the negative state at the end of the fiscal year. Um, so what may happen is I may have to put some of the expenses to the appropriated. So like John's position, if I have a little extra money there, Tim Holland's position, um, things like that is what the magic I do at the end of the year. Uh, and um, so that was talking about the um, fees, um, school choice, circuit breaker, um, all of that is, I discussed those last month. Uh, those change, there'll be another change to that. I think it's <coughs> April, they come out with another rendition of how many students are coming in and out. And, um, and the special education tuition I discussed last month that we are having students come in. Um, and I do see that there was a little um, error on the report here under education fund that should be zero. We should have um, just changed that 275 to 300 in the plus or minus under education. That What that's telling us is another taxpayer has given us $25 towards education with their tax bill. That's, thank you, whoever you were. Um, so if anybody has any questions specifically looking around the room. on revenues. It's Lindsay, are you putting your hand up? Just taking your glasses off. Yes, yeah. Ms. Ducharme. That's a little bit of all. I've always been a little bit mystified by how, how the Y charges versus how we charge. Um, can we take a second to talk about that? Sure. And I think you've touched on this a couple times, and I know it has to do with number of children enrolled. Yes. But so what has been kind of. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So what actually happens with the YMCA, that after school program, that's a, called an RFP, a request for proposals that we go out. It's a five year agreement that we go into with them. And what it is, is based on that, it's um, people bid on, um, you know, or give us re proposals on if they would run an after school program for us. In that RFP, it bases on a rate that they would pay us for the use of our buildings. So it would be in there and it's based on if you have so many students, higher number of students, we get a certain dollar amount. If there's less students, they don't pay as much. Um, so we didn't change that with the, you know, pandemic. We kept maintained that. Um, so therefore, um, there's not as many students that are participating at each of the schools. So say I used to get $112 a month for each student, I might only be getting $80 because that is the criteria in that RFP. So it's a binding agreement that we signed many years ago. Um, matter of fact, I think it's got one more year of this last five, but that's how it's based on. Now what they charge their students is they're in their world, not ours. Yeah, so, and we probably don't have any other alternatives, right? The, we don't have I mean, anything the, right so we we did um request proposals sometimes we get one or two um other people that do participate but um the criteria usually ends up or in, in my tenure here in the last 10 years it has been the why why that has received it we don't have the capabilities right now of ourselves doing it you know you'd have to have a program administrator and and have um staff so some districts do that um, but right now, the, the Y is definitely a better avenue for us. It brings us in income, and we don't have to worry about the staffing and uh, the various other costs. Okay. I'm assuming by contract, we transfer liability to them too, probably, right? Yeah, so we would have a liability if anybody got hurt on our property, just like if I, 
somebody slip and fell tonight here. Um, but as far as the students and stuff, yeah, it would be their liability. Okay, you all set, Ms. Duchamp? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Next. Uh, let's do the um, gifts to schools or the um, grants, and then we'll do the expenditure report. Oh, no. <coughs> Hold, please. The schools. I know, I'm sorry. That's yeah. okay. No, look, I, I learned how to scan it so it's the right way. And when I got back to my office, I'm like, ah, did okay. it the wrong way. The so what I have here is the uh, DESE uh, grants um, that we're looking to be accepted. So earlier um, this evening, I talked about the four um, grants that had um, increases and or decreases in the um, the FY 2021 state coronavirus prevention fund program doesn't have a grant number so it's throwing me off in my world but uh -huh. that's why it says NA um, so I'm looking for the committee to uh, um, accept two hundred twenty five thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars and you would like that separate from the DPH we're gonna take all right I'm looking for a motion I'm sorry mr. Manzo what's your Yep. So what you're yep. So that you're all the changes, and then that one last one is a, a whole new amount, two hundred eighteen. So the total is uh, two hundred twenty-five one seventy-eight in additional grant funds that you had not previously accepted. Even though five hundred and sixty-six of that is a decrease in one of the line Correct, items, yes. it's a net increase of two hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars. Who wants to go on the books as having made that motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Coelho. Second. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Uh, do we have any questions, concerns, comments? You know what I say about accepting money. Here we go. Roll call. Ms. Ducharme. Yes, please. Yes, please. I love that. <laughs> Mr. Manzo. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Robinson. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Coelho. Yes, because no one says no to free money. I love that answer. Myself, yes, that passes five to zero. Fantastic. And the next thing I have is a Department of Public Health um, Comprehensive School Health Services, also known as CSHS grant. And we're looking for the additional $15,000 to be accepted. Who wants to make that happy motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Lindsay, get in the books, baby. Give me a second. Sure, second. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Ducharme. Uh, any comments or questions on that? Um, I will ask, is this the grant money that we use to like do a big survey, like the health risk survey? Um, you know? it, it came from the same area, but this was um, you know, money that came in that does professional development for the nurses, um, covers for substitute nurses. And June is actually meeting with me tomorrow to discuss what does she think we should be using this $15,000 for for me to meet with the superintendent. Cool. Fantastic. All right. So there's a motion on the table and a second. Here's our anybody else have any questions? I'm looking around the table. Miss Ducharme. Thumbs up. Okay. I, I saw that thumb. Thank you. Okay. That's a yes. Mr. Manzo. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Robinson? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Coelho? Yes. Myself? Thank you. Myself? Yes. That passes five to zero. Yeah. And that this money did come in because of the the um, pandemic. So we'll be looking at to see what, you know, maybe buying, you know, PPE and various other things that are pandemic-y. Okay. Pandemic-y. That's, that's a, <laughs> that a great word. word. <laughs> We're going to make that a new word. We'll send that over to the curriculum department. The next CISL meeting, we'll ask them to add that word. Okay. There you go. Uh, the next thing I have is gifts to schools. Hmm. Hmm. There it is. Okay. And these are the gifts to schools for the month that we received in the month of uh, February. Right. Um, and um, at the what I'm looking for is an approval of ten thousand three hundred and ten dollars and twenty cents. Um, various um, schools. The uh, middle school received um, a Beverly Ed Foundation grant for art therapy with um, teacher Michael Collins. 
Um, the Beverly Masonic Angel Fund um, sent us $895.15 for um, electronics for students in needs. And the Life Touch, which would be the photography, $4,345.05. And that goes to the general use that the principal would oversee. Cove received um, their portrait commission of $1,000. $817.18, North Beverly, $1,554.91, and the Beverly McEwen Preschool, $554.77. All of these come in, and the principals have um, control of what they would use the funds for. And the last one is the district-wide, and we receive this money as um, royalty commission. So when you buy a sweatshirt that says Beverly, in certain stores, they just send us money. So it's $143.14. And that would come underneath the um, district, which would be the superintendent, assistant superintendent would decide what to use the funds for in, in the um, gifts to schools account. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to accept uh, under gifts to schools a total amount of $10,310.20. I'll make that motion. So moved by Ms. Coelho. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Mr. Manzo. Second. Any questions, comments before we run around the room? Roll call vote. Ms. Ducharme. I'll give more than a thumbs up this time. Sorry about that. Yes, please. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Mr. Manzo. Yes. Ms. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Coelho. Yes. Myself. Yes. That passes five to zero. Um, and the last um, report that we have here is the expenditure report. I'm not sure how much bigger I can make this one without it scrolling off the screen. All right, so this this report is like 38 pages. So if somebody has a question on a particular page, I will fast forward to that page, yourself included, Ms. Sherburn, mm -hmm. um, as you're looking at your printed copy. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I'm just going to stay here on page one. Um, so I just uh, like to preface it each month that I do have um, monthly meetings with um, various cost center department heads to discuss their things. Um, what my goal is for the next um, month or two is not only to be um, working with superintendent on building a budget for next year, is to see where we have some savings and or cost overruns that we would have to um, do with this. So if anybody has any particular questions, I do um, review the SP 860 accounts, which is on page 36. Hold, please. We're close. SP. Can I have that number? 860? Yep, on page yep, um, 36. Um, and it goes on to page 37. Okay. Um, so those are items that we watch um, at each time. Uh, there is, you know, some um, a balance of two hundred sixteen uh, thousand um, in the contracted services. Um, so that's an area that Ms. Plansky will be looking at to see if we need to do anything, um, you know, for assistance for students, um, you know, from the pandemic, and um, and we're looking at the, um, you know, the private residential has two forty five. And the collaborative line has 226. Those are good balances to have at this moment, but at any time we can find out that somebody is going out and um, that we would still be liable for those. Um, we'll be watching those um, balances to see if there's any savings. This is an offset to the circuit breaker. We'll make sure that we have our circuit breaker um, balance remains the same as it was, um, you know, what we take in this year can be rolled over into the next year, which is a um, very um, good position to be in. Uh, most of our accounts are salary accounts. Um, we'll be looking at those to um, check with offsets. We may have some um, kindergarten um, offsets that we, um, you know, um, need to look at as far as what's getting charged to the revolving accounts. Um, areas that are of um, concern would be the um, unemployment. I'm still getting unemployment bills. Um, we have not paid. We made one payment. Um, that's going to be on page 32, I think, in that range. Uh, nope, on page 33. 
Um, unemployment, um, we have a um, looks like a nice balance of $145,000, but I'm sitting on bills that are about $120,000. I'm still working out what is actually fraudulent and what is not, and they have actually given us a break of we didn't have to pay them until June 30th. Um, so I'm taking advantage of that area. Um, the um, health insurance, the city does that uh, quarterly, but they haven't done, um, well, it looks like they have done two quarters and they haven't done the third quarter yet. Um, and then um, other things that the, the invoices come in on a, on, a, on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So I don't know if anybody has any particular line they're looking at. Yes, Mr. Manzo. So um, the area that you just talked about a couple minutes ago, page 36, 37, the 860 lines, there's a couple of those that are like close to 100% spent, so the, the public tuition and private day, but but then there are big numbers in encumbrances, and so are those all, that, that money's all tied up in encumbrances for, yes. for tuitions, and so we're not worried about that because the money's there, it's just in a different column. Right, so where it says, yes, it's just in the in the second to last column is an encumbrance. So what I do require is that the special education department encumbers something, and if a student goes from a collaborative to a private day or to a residential, I ask them to unencumber the funds in the one line and encumber it in another. Yeah. So that's what we really want to see. We want to see that it's in the encumbrance, that we know about it. Right. What we don't want to see at the end of the year is that, oh, wait a minute, this bill was not encumbered, and here is $300,000, and you didn't know about it. Right. So um, when I was in um, my previous district, that was one thing that they got a big surprise at the end of the year on June 30th and had to go to the city council. I vowed when I was here, there's no way, you mm -hmm. know, we're going to always encumber it. So it is more work for the um, special ed um, clerical staff because there is a lot of movement that happens. And, and it might be one, it might be from still in the collaborative line, but one school to another school, somebody aged out, somebody's not going, all of a sudden we have a new one. And that's why we do have our monthly meetings to talk about, you know, what's on the radar. And so um, our out of district coordinator has uh, students that she's watching. We're not sure if it's going to happen. We don't encumber them until we know for sure. But at least we talk about it so there's not that surprise at right. the end of the year. You really covered yourself. Yes. And that's what it is. The encumbrances are, we, this is everybody that's known. So it's actually a good thing to see, you know, 250,000. Um, but we'll have to, you know, watch that because we might be able to use that someplace else yeah. in the next few months. But but the assumption is that, that all that, all that money is going to go to cover tuitions for students and out of district yep. placements. And so, even even when you see a big number sitting in encumbrances, you got to you got to tell yourself that money's already spent. Yep, yep, it's already earmarked. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh yes, Mr. Sharm. Thank you. I'm. Uh... I understand that. So just in my simple terms, I understand the encumbrances to basically be a maybe column. So like if I look at program, as soon as special education or whoever's in charge of the summer program knows that there might be anticipated expenses associated that with that, we move it, we put some money in the encumbrances. Yep. And so, then okay. Yeah, so the encumbrance is something that you know, it's earmarked. So we don't do a hypothetically but we do a, we have, you know, 10 students and their cost for the year is this. Now, what may happen is a student may stop going to school and we're not going to be paying that particular vendor. Then I require them to go in and reduce the encumbrance so it's an actual. And this would have, this would be through, so usually in May, June, we start, we can pay our bills. We can pay our June bills in May so that we close out the fiscal year a little bit faster. But this is, as far as we're concerned today, we're going to be paying out these before June 30th, if they're in the encumbered line. Okay. Now, they Thank may you. also know <laughs> that they have some students that may go out. That's okay. where we have that extra, you know, um, on uh, collaborative, the 226, that's the the what ifs. We don't want to move that out right now, 
to another area, but the special education director and myself will meet, and when we start getting into the May-June area, we'll have to see where it is, you know, where we, where we think we're going to end at that point. And if we have an extra money, maybe we would say we're going to purchase, you know, an additional school bus that we needed, but we didn't really have, but okay, we had a savings, for an example. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking around the room. I see no Kim more I see no more hands. Kimberly has her hand. Oh, up. I'm sorry. Uh, you were you were camouflaged. That's that's true. I that's didn't see true. you. Yes. Hold on, I gotta get back to the page. Okay. Um what page? And I'll go there too. I have uh page three. So I was going over all the budgets for the different schools. And I know that our custodians have been working oh so extra hard and diligent. And all of them have overtime reserves. There's still three months of school left. Um, and heirs custodians only have $8 left in their budget. Yes, yeah, so um, what does happen in, um, in that overtime line is um, I do an estimate of a certain dollar amount and uh, for each school. But then we also have the B and G um, over timeline, which is on page six. And um, that's the, um, that has $18,000 just in, um, on page six, BG 295-61001 plus the substitutes it has 63,000. <laughs> so this is where I'd start making where if they have to, you know, they need some needs and costs, I'd cover it from there. So I would be asking for a transfer from the B and G to the um, heirs. Um, it's really just what have we done historically? What is the amount? Let's even it out by school. Um, but if uh, somebody needs some more work, extra work because of something that happened in the school or they're going to have, you know, more functions. So that's really where we use the overtime a lot is if there's functions in the school. So like family math and science night. Yes. Um, so those are the types of things that happens there. But um, if there is custodial overtime, obviously <coughs> we would pay all the custodians their overtime. I would just be moving that money um, from one area to another. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on our on our lovely expenses report? All right. Um, is this the end of our agenda? This is the end of our agenda. Yes. All right. So before we uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, um, let's talk about our next meeting, please. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull up the calendar. Actually, I'd be smart if I pulled up the school calendar, right? I think our next meeting is... Uh... I think it's the 21st, but... Okay. That's... I, I'm ha Oh, goodness. Is it the... Oh. So nobody wants to come and meet with me on it. Eight, on... So it's... <laughs> so I put it in my calendar the 3rd, so... Uh... So it's probably a back to back on the 28th then I'm going to guess but I'm trying to get there we'll see I'm not really I don't have my calendar that's What do you on got Mr. Wall. Manzo you're so organized I, I have it on the 28th at 6:30 The 6:30. 28th at 6:30 so it's another stacked meeting yeah. and are we going to we had talked about maybe bringing forward food services before the end of the year are we ready to ask for that guest speaker or do we want to have another no guest speaker let's just roll up our sleeves and do work kind of meeting um, Or do you want to talk about it later I think that um, the food service would probably be able to do something on the April. Okay, so we'll we'll think about that. Yeah. You and I, we have a month. We have a little more than a month to plan, thanks to April vacation, right? Because mm -hmm. we're going to mm -hmm. go after. However, we are we are stacking that night, so we only have an hour, right? Yeah. So, um, um, all right. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about before anything they want to maybe put on our big on our big calendar of let's make sure we talk about something in the the next couple of meetings before the year ends? I was hoping we could get Mike Collins to come in and talk about age back again for a while. <laughs>
<laughs> that was really cool. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed that, Mr. Manzo. I do. So I alluded earlier to, I, I mentioned something to Gene. Um, we may well want Mr. Collins to come in. There's an issue at our city level um, having to do with um, Varian that may, in fact, be affecting some of our facilities. So that's the issue that I have kind of penciled in to, to be on the calendar, um, or at least in, like, pose to Mr. Collins to see what comes back with that. Um, so, I mean, uh, if you want to um, ask him to come to the April meeting, we could push Christina to the May, but. All right, we'll, we'll maybe talk about that because I think that um, in the really big picture, um, and I don't know if anyone else in this room or online is part of it, the, the mayor in conjunction with Salem Salem's mayor has um, the commute, C-A-A-C are the letters. Um, who wants to help me out with what those letters mean? Uh, co action committee are the last two letters. Climate. Action. Climate. It's, not, it's not the C-A-A-C, is it? The clean action. Yeah, clean the clean. Energy. No, it's clean energy. All right. Well, anyway, committee. there's there's this committee, and I was named from the school committee to be on it, and we've met several times, and there are initiatives that that group is going to bring forward that then both cities are going to try to implement, and then there will be, you know, in essence, a trickle down. Like, what can we do in the schools to align with what our mayor has, <laughs> you know, asked us to do as part of this committee it's called and the climate action advisory committee resilient together fantastic thank you yes resilient together so some of the things that they've talked about are for instance right composting increasing the amount of composting and we have talked about that before and we've talked that, about that specifically about uh having it in our cafeterias mm -hmm. um another thing that they you know green any kind of clean energy and as we know a lot of our buildings have um, solar already happening um, on their rooftops or we have um, we voted earlier this year as a committee to put in um, the charging stations and at sev several additional schools. Um, uh, one of the things that they've talked about also is um, local grown food. And so, again, that might be something that we'd want to talk to Christina about, but maybe we need more time mm -hmm. um, because I wasn't on. So we break into Zoom rooms and we talk about little, you know, and so I don't I'm not super familiar with the big group, but maybe we want to coordinate with the mayor and find out what his timeline is on any one of these things, what the committee, the committee has a report, it should be coming forward. And then how is that going? How can we as a school system try to incorporate some of those things and be good um, love your mother earth participants mm -hmm. um if if possible right teacher and representation on those committees as well who does we do so i know kate twombly is a member there's a, i think there are two teachers at, uh, that are also part of the climate yeah. action advisory committee good job yeah. <laughs> i'm lucky i know your name okay <laughs> so, some so days I, I, don't. Say, I mean i would say that we would want them to be part of the conversation as well. Okay. Yes, yes. So, um, so that's maybe something for maybe even June. Mm -hmm. Or um, what I most worry about is if there's a, I don't think there's going to be any edicts coming out of that. But for instance, if there were, right, if our if our city council were to throw down a big a big uh, like, yeah, we believe in this, we want to do this, uh, everybody needs to compost, for instance then that might have a monetary impact on our budget and we say okay we have to um, do that then what would it mean and as as we know we're building the budget right now so i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon um, because the committee just quote unquote finished the other day mm -hmm. um so i'm looking at you miss miss birthday flowers um has there been any conversation in the uh before we wrap up here has there been any conversation on the city council side about um actionable caac recommendations not yet no just um i think some of us have participated in some of the resilient together um like little focus groups we haven't gotten so far as to what the next steps would be yet okay fantastic all right um all right so I'm looking one last time. Anybody have anything else? All right, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. Lindsay, yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Manzo. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, here we go. Roll.
do I, I have to take the roll call for this too. Miss, Miss Ducharme. Yes, please. It's just not like uh, we don't get to debate it at all. Mr. Manzo. Yes. Miss Robinson. Yes. Miss Coelho. Yes. Myself. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And happy birthday, Julie. Happy ooh, birthday. Ooh, ooh. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. It was so nice to spend my birthday with you. <laughs> Somehow I don't Thank think I don't think that's super I'm sincere. Sincere. I'm being sincere. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bevcam. All right. Thank you.